This is an Indian motorcycle chieftain dark horse. It's not the sort of bike I want to be sliding around in a muddy forest or traipsing through snow, salt and grit on. So we've indulged ourselves. We've run away for a winter escape down to the Algarve to give ourselves a little taste of California cruising. This thing is actually starting to get under my skin. It's quite amusing. I've said it before, right, in big cruises like this, they're not, they're not my world. They're, they're not what I'm used to. They're not what I've grown up wanting and riding. I'm really excited to ride them now because I've realized that they can be so much fun in a, in a different way. It's not an adrenaline going flat out, hanging it out kind of way. It's like an enjoyable, cruisy kind of way. You, you're not, you can still ride it quick. Like these roads out here are phenomenal roads. And there's still a, a bit of fun to be had riding fast down them, but it's, it's not going for massive lean angles. It's trying to keep a smooth flow to the riding. And riding like that, I, I'm hard pushed to think of a better bike. You know that thing they say you should try something new? Get outside of your comfort zone, expand your horizon. This is me, this is me doing just that. I am not a cruiser bike guy by habit. I'm a sports bike guy, a dirt bike guy, big into me adventure bikes, but I've not spent a great deal of time on stuff like this. I rode a couple of them last year with Indian and it kind of, yeah, it kind of gave me an itch to try it more. It's a different style of motorcycling, but most importantly, it's still a motorbike. It's still got two wheels, and I'm out to prove that everything with two wheels can put a massive smile on your face. And it's looking good for this thing. It's comfortable, I've got music, I can put a screen up if I want a bit more wind protection, I can wind the screen up and down. I've got panniers to chuck my picnic in <laughs> and a bottle of beer for the end of the ride. So what is it? Well, it's an Indian motorcycle chieftain dark horse. If you look along the Indian range, they've got everything from real stripped back, kind of naked, raw and aggressive looking bikes, right through to big kind of fully fared in things, some real traditional old looking motorcycles. The FTRs, obviously we've, we've ridden a lot here at Bike World. The chieftain's kind of their bagger style, low aggressive street bike, but importantly, it's meant to be comfortable, practical, and, and useful for spending whole days motorcycling on. Which, again, if you're coming from sports bikes world, we can all ride a sports bike for 12 hours a day. There's not many of us that are comfortable and happy at the end of that. And this is a different way of enjoying roads, enjoying rides, but not sacrificing your comfort, not going for the bum up, head down, aggressive Larry approach, just a nice, cruisy, gentle ride and enjoy the road in a different way. And I must admit all that stuff, if 18 year old Chris could hear me saying this, he'd be scoffing and laughing and rolling his eyes and saying he'd gone soft. It's, it's not something I ever thought I'd look for in motorcycles. But the more I ride this, the more miles I put on it, the more I appreciate it. And I'm not about to hang up my leathers. I'm not about to sell all my supermotos and stop doing skids and wheelies. That's never gonna happen. But sometimes it's nice to ride at a slower pace. The thing that surprised me most riding this today, I've been up in these beautiful hills around the Algarve. Some of my favorite roads in the world are here. And I've been riding back to back against a sports bike. But something I've found with this is I don't feel like I'm having to sacrifice fun. Sure, I'm not going nearly as fast through the turns. I'm not pitching the thing on its ear and dragging a knee through the corners. But you work to the ground clearance, you work to the limitations of what you've got, and you can still ride a road quick. And actually it becomes a real challenge to see how much corner speed you can carry, how smooth a line you can carry through the turns and still make really good progress. And that's really helped by the response when you open that thing. Check it out, I'm doing, what's that? 40 mile an hour, so 70 kilometers per hour, so 45-ish, sixth gear. And it just purrs along, it will pull out of a corner still. This is nothing like the sports bike engine I've been riding out here at the same time. This is a 116 cubic inch, 171 newton meters of torque, monster of an air-cooled V-twin engine. When you open the throttle in first gear or sixth gear, it seems to respond in exactly the same way. A sort of, not juddering, but like a thumping shove that pushes you out of the turn. You can ride along in sixth gear and go right down to sort of one and a half thousand RPM and just open the gas and it 
roars out the corner. You can never worry about high side of the thing. You're never lifting the front out of the corner, but just using that torque and feeling that engine, you know, you see where people develop that, that love and that passion for the old American V-twins. And this one is a modern new American V-twin, but with that feel, that traditional big thumping, torquey, powerful feel. It's not a Revy engine. It loves that drive off the bottom. And in this style of bike, I've found that perfect. It's been really enjoyable today. Corners, brilliant roads. Yeah, you work to your footboards, find out where the limit is, and then just ride to that limit. And then it's a really nice, really enjoyable flowing ride. You know, I rode for two hours, still comfortable, still happy, still smiling. You're never aching, you're never hurting. You're never feeling like you've got to impress anyone or impress the bike. You just ride at the pace you're happy riding at. On a, on a sports bike, my bias is always on the front brake. On this thing, I've always switched my bias to the back brake. The front brake's good and effective, but most of my deceleration is done using kind of 50-50 or even 60% rear brake, 40% front brake. You do work both ends of the bike. In those sort of second and third gear corners, the way the engine is, I didn't find myself braking that much, just rolling on and off the throttle, using that engine braking to correct the speed. When I was sort of charging around some of the bigger roads out here, some of the long straights that then come to a corner, that's when you find you've got to get the thing stopped. You can't hide, it's 360 kilos. It will not stop on a dime, so you've got to use both brakes and a little bit of forward planning there. It is a long thing, but it's stable. It doesn't shake the bars. If you start actually riding it aggressively, it never seems to tie itself in a knot or do anything untoward. It sort of pitches in, it'll flop onto a line, and then it, it kind of stays there. It doesn't do anything untoward, which is what makes it enjoyable to start to ride it a bit quicker. You're not having to wrestle the thing. It kind of goes where you put it. So as well as enjoying the ride and the chassis and the road and spending time looking at the scenery, enjoying where you are, one of the things that's really probably changed my mind about things on motorcycles is all this stuff in front of me here. Now, I've never got on a motorbike and desperately wanted Apple CarPlay or refuse to ride until I can see a proper map. But having this kit in front of you means that you can choose roads at random. You can navigate without having to set a route. You just zoom in and out of the map on the dash and, and pick your own way. You can put a route to somewhere you want to go in and it's super easy to follow. I've got my music up here. I've got my phone. So if I want to see messages through my earpiece or if I want to make phone calls, that's all there. Never needed that on a bike before. Now I've got it. Probably going to want it on every single bike I ride. <laughs> really useful and one of the clever features they've put these four big buttons on the dash so instead of having to scroll through menus and navigate using a little scroll wheel on a switch gear like kind of most other motorcycles you've just got four big idiot proof buttons that you can jab like a gibbon on the dash and it it pops to where you want to go which lets you concentrate on your riding but still get what you want out of the dash system now on there as well they've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, whatever you want to call it, but they've got like an Apple CarPlay feature. So you plug your phone in and it pings up with Google Maps or your messages. The phone goes in the little box on the top, which has a cargo limit of half a kilo, amusingly. Um, and you just plug the, plug the lead in there. The only thing I struggle with, I've got an iPhone 10 or something like that. Other phones are available. I've got a medium sized phone and with the charge lead plugged in, it is a little bit tight. So if you've got a, a large screen phone, if you're one of those people, it's going to be a wedge getting into the dash, which again might be a bit annoying, but yeah, that's one of the limitations there. The only way you can use the Apple CarPlay feature is if you've got a Bluetooth headset attached. So whether it's one in your helmet or I just use little skull candy earbuds, um, or if you don't want to have them in, you can just have them paired and chuck them in the dash as well. A little bit of a limit. Apparently that's a part of the contract with Apple. So you're not actually allowed to have the Apple CarPlay system unless you let the Hey Siri thing work. So apparently that's why that's like that. In all honesty, what it made me do is it made me use the built-in maps and navigation that Indian Motorcycle provide, which I normally avoid manufacturer supplied stuff like that, like the Plague, because Google Maps works so well. But it made me use the Indian one and it worked really well. So. In terms of practical features on the bike, really like the adjustable screen on the right hand switch cube. Get onto, so I found anything above sort of 55 mile an hour with a full face lid, but visor open sunglasses on. I wanted the screen up, drop it down when you go slower. Super easy, super helpful. Central locking on the panniers as well. Daft things, but it just made me use the bike more. If I wanted to go to the shops, if I wanted to go out for dinner, or if I wanted to go for a long ride, I could just chuck whatever I needed in the panniers. And then as you walk away from the bike, either flip the key fob or hit the button on the dash and it locks it. One of my favorite features I've discovered is that if you press and hold the lock key on the fob, when someone stood next to your bike, it sounds the horn and frightens the life out of them, which Al the cameraman's really enjoyed every time I've done that today. So after spending a good few days on this bike and, and kind of enjoying it, riding it around in all sorts of situations, I'm not about to sell my sports bike. I'm not gonna sell my sports bike and replace it with one of these. I am, however, gonna stop dismissing 
big comfortable cruiser motorcycles because I've really enjoyed riding it. I've taken probably more opportunities to ride this than I would have done if it hadn't been a big comfy cruiser. And part of that's the novelty for me. It's new, it's different, it's not something I'm used to riding. It's a really usable motorcycle and I think the bit I like the most is I don't feel any pressure on myself to ride fast or slow. I just ride however I want to ride. And that's something that with an adventure bike I always feel the pressure to go off-road. With a sports bike, I always feel the pressure to go fast. And with a supermoto, I always feel the pressure to jump down flights of stairs and get myself an ASBO. This bike, I don't feel any of that. I just want to get on and ride and ride for no one but myself, which is an odd thing for me. And I'm actually really enjoying it.